Good morning, Slimers. Good evening, Slimers. Good afternoon, Slimers. Whatever time of day you're at. Yeah. Thank you for listening to our podcast. Yeah. We'd like to quickly say, just before this episode begins, we have a Patreon. If you like listening to our voices, there's hours and hours more of it. On our Patreon, it's £4 a month. There's bonus episodes. Uh-huh. There are Q&As which you can join, yep. of which we do episodes of regularly on the Patreon too. There's access to uh, live shows if we choose to do so, and etc. So lots of, lots of nice things. Plus, it gets us spaghetti. We love to eat spaghetti. Um, anyway, thanks very much for listening, and uh, please enjoy this episode of Slam Country. Thank thanks. you. Enjoy. Your podcast is so stupid. I hate it. At night. I hate it. So you'll get tell. I hate you. Huge Davies. And I hate you. You are now entering Slam Country. We do apologise today. Uh, <laughs> we are. We've picked a spot uh, next to a ping pong table, which you'll undoubtedly be hearing. Right, right now. now and yeah. we have no headphones so we're flying blind we have no idea what the levels are like what we're saying um, is this is not have, really a podcast we have no idea which of the buttons does which sound effect I'm no, sure well, that well a lot of podcasts would, a lot of people would say you don't really need the buttons to a podcast on a soundboard but here we are here we are Pr- press one of them That's, uh, do you want A, B, C or D, just um, D I would take I'll take D please that one's quite long. Just for the, I think that's the one that goes. Wah, 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 wah. Oh, that's good. Yeah, I do think. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think. Let's see how quick B is. I, I reckon that's ching. I think that's the gunshot. Uh, do we have a gunshot? Sh- we sh- have. We have. Da, 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 yeah. da, 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 da. We have uh, ching. Do we have the? Um, we have the wah, klaxons. Wah, wah. We have. Um, do you have the klaxons? Not the band. The. Um, we have the zootons and the Maccabees. We oh, don't have the klaxons. Brilliant. Um, One time I was at a Reading festival and there was a at a festival you have like the camping bit and then you have the uh, the bit where the, the music area right the stage the, well the stage area but <laughs> you have to sort of get in there there's like a there's like a little filter we have to go through yeah and then we were going through and I was waiting for someone by the entrance yeah and they were a bit late because I was waiting there but there was a girl and she was tied to a um, she was tied to one of those camping chairs duct tape to it uh-huh. and everyone's going past her taking photos of her and etc etc she'd obviously fallen asleep on it or something and, and her, her friends, friends had, had done a prank yeah. yeah and she was in good spirits you know she was kind of loving it um, she was loving the attention um, and I was watching her for about well, 15 minutes I'd say and she was really getting into it and at one point um, the smile started to fade from her and then she just burst into tears and she just went I just want to see the Maccabees. <laughs> <laughs> that it was really good. Yeah, fun. that would. Know, yeah. that would. The pressure. If I was tied to a chair in front of a million people, the pressure I think from me to seem like I was in on the joke and having a laugh. Oh yeah, yeah, would be for monumental. sure. She did the right thing. Yeah. But then the problem was, it's like I don't know. There's like a hundred thousand people there, and they all want a photo with Chair Girl. Yeah, you know, just like yeah. like Poo Girl. You know about Poo Girl? Uh, you told us about Poo Girl, man. She she exists. She's real. I don't she, know how many people want a photo with her, though. Well, yeah. Well, you you know you have you got to do it for the story. Now this know. is. Can I tell you what's can I, just quickly what's what's crazy? Oh, by the way, we should say that we're uh, today we're in Soho Square. We're in Soho Square, London Soho Square. Um, lunch hour. We both um, edit loads of stuff with him, and I just bought a a French fry jumper. So we're kind of overloaded with stuff. So we're not walking about today. We're not today. walking about today because I basically, be, yeah, I, yeah, I had to pick up all my gear and recording gear from the Soho <laughs> Theatre where I just did a run and then and then uh, and meet here. And that brings me to uh, just a quick. And also, if you would say that Sunil's not here either. Sunil's not here either. He's like very he busy. He's God just he's always, always he acting. Um, he's acting in the wind. Things. He's AWOL. But yeah. Talking to Soho Theatre, a couple of quick bits of business as we always <laughs> have to do. Shout outs. Thank you to Arthur and Will for coming to my Soho show. And thank you to Bert. Yeah, who came to all of our shows. Yeah, Bert came to see me. Last and week. So, was it Bert or Bertie? Bertie, Bert or Bertie. Yeah. Forgotten which, um, either. But you came to, you, you know, you came to... You came to see us at the inaugural gig that I run. And then Scarlet you came Green. to see me at Slow 24, which is very nice. of Thanks very much We should. Coming. We will repeat. Anyone who watches the podcast, come say hi to us. We, we really enjoy it. Also, shout out to that man who just came up to me at this bench and... and uh, Said, what? are you the man with the piano? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he did, well, <laughs> to be fair, I am the man. I am the man with the piano. <laughs> <laughs> not right now, you're not. Well, you're the man with the Coke Zero and the y- French Yeah, jumper. it's true. It's true. Now, can I tell you what's curious? What's curious? So I play table tennis, sort of um, semi regularly socially, right? Yeah. And um, Mark Silcock, shout out Sam Campbell, shout out, shout out to Ray Badran, <laughs> and um, 
I haven't, well, I haven't been for a while, regretfully. But in my experience, when you're on the, the public tables like this, like yeah. we play on often, um, there is a contingent of people who kind of haunt the tables who are extremely good at table tennis. And yeah. they're, they're always like, you know, you have to get in early with your pals because then it all, basically all the best table tennis in London, the table tennis players in London come out and it comes in, turns into really competitive, you know, when it stays on or whatever. But this chap here who's come up to us right before the recording, and I said, play does either of you want to give me a game? Give me yeah. a game. Desperate for it. I was like, he's going to be amazing. But we're watching him now, he's completely rubbish. Is it's, it? <laughs> it's so funny that he's challenging strangers and losing to them. Yeah. <laughs> but do you, th- do you think this guy maybe, you know how fishing is not really about the fishing, it's about the social interaction, it's about hanging out with your dad, it's about gutting a fish. Yeah. It's about seeing the inside of a fish. This is maybe the example of it in which this ping pong is not really for the game. This ping pong is to make a connection with a stranger. I was thinking it's more like, um, do you know the story of the Green Knight? I do, Dev, Dev Patel. Yeah, there's a movie about Once it. Once Upon a Time, Dev Patel was in a show called Skits. <laughs> <laughs> and then I reckon he's like the Orange Knight because he's wearing an orange jacket. Oh, he is wearing an orange I jacket. I think he comes up to you and he goes, challenge me at table tennis. And then you get, you, you know, you get proud and hubristic. And then he goes, all right, one year's time. In one year hence, you have to find me and I'll play the same slam serve stuff that you yeah. played against me. Yeah. And you do you reckon he's, in all, he's from the from Arthur's Round Table? Do you reckon he's from Camelot? I think he lives in the, the Orange Chapel. Yeah, in the middle of the woods with a big table t- with a big Cornelius table tennis table. Let's cast the King Arthur's Round Table out of people in this park. Let, let's say it's like a Marvel Cinematic Universe big oh. franchise. Who's King Arthur? <laughs> not people in this park. Not Just people. In this, maybe you can <laughs> cast people in this park. I'm not. I'm not saying you can't cast people in this park. But I think King Arthur. King, King Arthur. Um, I'm thinking. I'm thinking maybe Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm thinking Ryan Reynolds is uh, King Ryan Arthur. Ryan Reynolds is King Arthur. Okay. I, th- I think he's got a really good British accent in him. I th- Do you right, think so? Yeah. And then maybe um, if Ryan Reynolds is going to be uh, King Arthur, then maybe um, then maybe we could get like uh, wow, that, that that's a nice leaf that's just fallen on us there. What does that mean? Do you think? When a leaf falls on you. Yeah, what do you think that means? Good omen. Because, really... New beginnings. It's dead leaf, though. No, but it's autumn, new beginnings, it's... Things are growing. Yeah, but it's also things are dying, too, you know? That's life, brother. That's crazy you just said that, sorry. I think, um... You're a very wise person. I, 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 I wouldn't want to play you at chess, just because of what you said right there. Oh, we, we said we, we had an idea to play <laughs> a game of chess on the episode. I still think later on maybe we should play a game of... You know when people play mental chess? Where they, imagine, where they picture the board in their minds? We should try and oh, do like that. on the ceiling, like in Queen's Gambit. See how far, see how far you and me can get in a game of remembering the board state in a game of mental chess. Do you think that we should have an episode in which we imagine chess on the ceiling, no words, just all thoughts? I haven't seen Queen's Gambit. Well, listen, she plays chess on the ceiling because she's so she's so poor in the orphanage and she yeah. has nothing that she plays chess on the ceiling. And wow. That's how she gets so good because if you can play chess on the ceiling, you can probably play chess in person. It's a bit like when Ronaldo put those like, like weights on his legs so he could. So he could hoof a, uh, a ball through a stadium, or whatever. He, yeah, whatever yeah. he kind of does. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know what you mean. It's like, like, yeah, when you the training wheels. When you practice in yeah adverse conditions. That's what we're doing with this podcast. We refuse to <laughs> be in a studio or have headphones to check the sound levels. We're going to be the best so that, podcasters so in the game. When we eventually have the right equipment, this will be the best podcast of all time. Yeah, eventually. <laughs> we're never getting out of the orphanage. I um, I think what we're we talking about. Oh yeah, Ryan Reynolds is King Arthur. Ryan Reynolds is King Dressed Arthur. Dressed as Deadpool. Yeah, dress as Gaypool. Galahad. I'm thinking a lady. You know, not enough ladies around the right, the round table. You know what I'm uh, saying? There are a couple of ladies around the round table involved in the round Name table. Name them. Name apart from Guinevere. Guinevere is Guinevere's is not. Guinevere's not on the round table. Is older. She's knocking about. Is she as interesting and as older? Or do they both die before they get to the? They're tangentially involved in the in the the Arthurian uh, stuff. I'm sure. Yeah, sure. Tristan and is as old. She's knocking about. Um, I'm thinking Fleabag Morgana I'm thinking Mor- Fle- Morgan Le Fay I'm thinking Merlin is played by Fleabag Merlin is played by Fleabag now that's good but what about one looking, of our looking into the camera a little bit goes oh that's a bit of a spell you know <laughs> you know. having a look in there that's, that's portentous <laughs> <laughs> right that was a crazy armor Bugatti and Leviosa <laughs> into the camera I think bloody uh, hell no I think maybe Judy Dench for Merlin because Merlin's a, wow M- Merlin's got to be like op, like have gravitas State He's like, what are you saying about Fleabag? A bit older. How long is Flea? How old is Fleabag? She's what? She's she's getting on. She? We're not. We're not <laughs> going to do. We're not going to do that thing with uh, where Hollywood movies cast like um, 
cast women as really, cast like a, a like a thirty year old woman as, as a twenty nine year old man's son. Yeah, yeah, you mean like at, step mums, mother, step mums yeah. and Paul and stuff. No, not like she's that. not. Just she's <laughs> not old enough to be a mother. In Hollywood, you know, older older women have a have a harder harder shout of it. So I reckon we should. Um, okay, we should we'll be, go. How about they all really old then? It's like yeah, the ex- right. you know, it's like <laughs> yeah, okay. You know, it's like the expendables. <laughs> what about Judy Dench plays Arthur? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but it's like the Expendables. It's like they're all so old they can't be in films, normal films because they're too old. So they've gone. Listen, we're going to have an old person's <laughs> film. Normal films. Yeah, yeah. But what they've done is, what well, actually, if you w- look at the Expendables, you can tell every single actor in that is um, paying th- off for divorce. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. It's actually like because it's, it, it's it's people think it's old movie stars, but that's actually that's the what that's in common. That's not what's in common. What's in common is they're paying. They're just trying to get any any money back from their big divorce. Do you know who the original Expendables were? Who are the original Expendables? The Knights of the Round Table. Bloody hell! All right, so let's go. They all have their individual. They're all individual heroes, but then they. Um, okay, no Ryan Reynolds for this Round Table. Let's let's Mark, King Arthur. Who's 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 Mark in Wahlberg. there? Who? Mark Wahlberg, King Arthur. <laughs> oh, Marky Mark. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Short temper. Short temper. Horrible man. Yeah. <laughs> you know he he plays a um, he plays a scientist in the Transformer film Age of Extinction. Yeah. And it's um. Is it's it one of the worst castings I've seen in my entire life. <laughs> Is it it's not believable that he'd be a scientist. It's absolutely crazy because he's not he's not <laughs> changed any of the way he, he doesn't change how he's talking in that whole film. So he's just talking like Mark Wahlberg, but he's using such broad scientific, scientific terms work. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> to, to, to describe what's going on that's in a fantastic. universe in which nothing makes sense. That's so it's pretty like, sick, actually. It's, it's actually quite a lot for him to do. It's great. Listen, and he's the, also he's the also, fucking deceptive cans. <laughs> yeah. And then he's also, his love interest is like someone who's, I think is quite literally 15 to 20 years younger than him in that movie. And That's his son I mean, is maybe 10 years younger than him. That's it's what crazy. I mean, you see. Yeah. Mark Wahlberg, he gets up every morning at 2 o'clock in the morning or something. Does he? Have you seen his schedule? It's absolutely crazy. Maybe put, I think he put out his schedule. Well, well also Arthur is famously in the in the latest stories. <laughs> he always gets up at 2 o'clock and works out in the yeah, gym. Yeah, he does nothing and is basically just a sort of like a cuck and then he dies. Is up so with the, in the Arthurian legend when he pulls the sword out of the stone. Mm. Wait, no, doesn't he get it from a, a lady in the lake though? Which there, are two, the, there are two swords: one in the stone, one in the lake. Wait, what's the one in the lake called? I think the lake one is Excalibur. And what's the one in the stone called? Uh, I don't think it has a name. I think it's just sword. It doesn't have a name. No. Should we name the sword? Um, yeah, let's call it uh, um, Optimus Prime. Optimus. That's a really good name for it. <laughs> Megatron. <laughs> Crazy. No, yeah, Optimus Prime. Optimus Prime, and then. Um, Megatron is good, but I'd like something else. Uh, maybe Megatron could be one of the knights on the round table. Yeah, okay. Maybe Meg- yeah. Who plays Megatron in the films? Uh, I think Hugo Weaving in the first one, but then they changed it to a random actor. Who plays Megatron? I think Hugo Weaving got so... I think he hated that film so much they couldn't have him in the press tour because he was slagging off the film. Who plays Megatron? <laughs> who plays Megan Fox? Uh, Hugo Weaving, yep. Yeah. I think all right. Hugo Weaving then as um, so you're bringing him back. I'm bringing him back. Hugo Weaving as Megatron as uh, Percival as Percival uh, Galahad. Maybe the most important role. The, the this is how we get the the ladies into the cinema. You know, oh, this is the yeah, the eye candy. Yeah. Galahad, Andrew Scott, hot priest from Fleabag. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. As the hot we, priest from Fleabag. Fleabag out. Priest from Fleabag in. Obviously, obviously, some one one of you is going to have to do some kind of fan out of this. Now, Andrew Scott, he's got a lot of different accents on him. What are we having him? How we? How is he talking in this Arthurian tale? He's speaking. Yep. He's a, he's doing. <laughs> he's, speak, he's speaking. He's yeah. speaking. <laughs> Sorry, I had just turned himself on and off again. He's speaking. He's speaking. <laughs> he's speaking. <laughs> Ed's twitching. <laughs> Ed's, he's speaking. He's looking. He's looking at a pigeon. The pigeon's sinking with him. Stop sinking with the pigeon. He's doing uh, an impression of Paul Mescal. Who? But get this. Yes. Paul Mescal. Yes. Is playing Lancelot and he's doing an impression of Andrew Scott as Lord oh Bruce. wait, who's the sexy one, Galahad or Lancelot? Galahad, but Lancelot is the one that cucks King Arthur. And Ooh. gets off with Guinevere. Oh bloody hell! Yeah, he cut he he cuts him big time, and him and Guinevere are like in love and shit like that. Oh bloody hell! Yeah, M- made in Camelot. Yeah, lot so of drama. Yeah, so it's one of those where it's like the only way is Camelot. Exactly. The only way is Cam- lots of drama. <laughs> that, <laughs> that would be, that such, would be the, uh, That's what the podcast should be called. The only way is Camelot. Actually, we might. I, I might actually have to say we'll edit that out because that's the exact kind of thing that 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 that, would, that some stupid commissioner would jump on. 
Well, the only what do you think people? Me and you made the only you're way saying that commissioners, the commissioners that listen to this podcast on the regular, <laughs> are going to steal it. Yeah, are going to steal that, and we'll be see, in in no, no, two no. years' time. We'll be seeing an, an, an all star cast of the only way is Camelot. <laughs> no, I'm saying you and me should actually pitch the only way is Camelot. That's a pretty good idea, to be honest. The only way is Camelot. It was a as a as a mockumentary um, kind of fake reality yeah. TV show, a retelling of the the, the Arthurian cycle. Uh, and like the chivalric they, they romances, they will never make it because there's no arc to it, you know. Apart from, of course, solving all the problems in the kingdom. No, I think there is art to it. There's lots of art to it. The way we'll do it will be extremely artful. No, an, no, an arc, not art. Oh, <laughs> oh, no. oh, there is an arc to it. What's the arc? Well, the arc is exactly what happens in the in the stories. What happens at the end of those stories? So they just they just sort of, they go. Maybe we shouldn't do this. So here's the deal. Do you want to hear my 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 quick breakdown of the of the Arthurian legends? I'd love it to be quick, really quick. Uh, Arthur gets born in... Is this before or after dinosaurs? After. Okay. Arthur gets born in Tintagel. His dad's called Uther. And I think Merlin's kicking about then as well, and it says, your son's going to be special. Does he come from forest? Yeah, he's a wild man of the woods. Yeah. He's a wild man of the woods, and he's chilling in the forest, and then he comes out to Tintagel and says, listen, this boy's going to be special, I he think. He says, would you like to play a game of ping pong with me in the park? Exactly, yeah, he's that kind of guy. And then he um, he turns up, Anyway, Arthur grows up, does all this important business. Yeah. Um, he gets the sword out of the lake, he pulls the sword out of the stone, and he invent- he eventually has his court in Camelot. Yeah. Where um where you know they're in their um they're all chilling there and he accrues all the best knights and the, f- the finest people around and Camelot's like the most virtuous and knightly and chivalrous place in the world. He's got people he's married to Guinevere. Uh, Lancelot comes by whose whole thing is, you know, he's like uh He's like the best knight in the world, but you know his big undoing is this main point of chivalry, where he basically cucks his mate. I think that's the lesson in his book. Oh, so he was really good. He's like the best knight in the world, but his, his major, his Achilles heel was that he's like he's knight. in love with his best friend's was wife. Was he the best knight in terms of like he was the most polite, or he he killed the most farmers? He's the most valorous. He's the best at fighting. He's the best at adventures. He's the most like courteous and gracious. I kind of want to meet him. He great. I'd love to meet him, man. I think he died. I'm not sure. And then you got Galahad, can't remember what he did. Um, the Percival, he's the one that gets the Grail, I think, and does all that shit with the Fisher King. Uh huh. Whom does the Grail serve? He asked the wrong question in the castle, and he. And so he all takes these lads, are they, did they see an ad in the paper, or what? How come they're all there? They just, they just all. I just sort of think that if you're back in Camelot days, uh, you go for your job interview at the round table, and they go, all right, what's your? Have you got a cool name? Yes, Galahad, Percival, Lancelot. Yeah, number Tristan. two. Are you, Tristan, exactly. Are you a brilliant knight? Yeah. Again, yes. Um, number three, have you, have you ever been in any way involved with the Holy Grail? And and half of them go, yeah, and they go, well, that's you, you're in. I think Huge Davies would get in. It's a pretty good name. The Huge Davies would definitely get in. Well, that Ed Knight, would he get in? I mean, you, it's in your name, isn't it? You're already halfway there. But would the, would, what are, well, I don't even know what all their surnames were. Arthur's, I guess, was Pendragon. That's um, a pretty cool name. I imagine something pretty British, like S- Smith. Yeah. Or um, Lancelot Smith. Or or um, or Walcott or something. <laughs> <laughs> or Kane. <laughs> you know, any of these traditional British names. You know, <laughs> Alexander Arnold. You know, Arthur. Gal- Alexander. <laughs> Galahad Alexander Arnold. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think Tristan's surname was Rice. <laughs> He was <laughs> Lancelot Sacker. <laughs> okay, new, new game. Let's let's put, let's, <laughs> no, put the, no, let's put the knights in positions of the football pitch. And then and then, okay, goalkeeper? And then, and then who's goalkeeper? And then Tristan, obviously, he does the the Romeo and Juliet thing with Tristan and old. They die and get poisoned, and they're in love with a love potion. And then um, Arthur gets killed by um, oh, and Morgan Le Fay is kicking around. She's an evil witch, and also Arthur's sister. And then also um, a guy called Mordred comes over, I think, with the Saxons. And they defeat Arthur and kill him, and he's buried uh, in Avalon, which is Glastonbury Tor. Uh, all right, here are the positions: okay. manager Arthur. Arthur. Oh, really? He's not manager no, he's, player. No, no, no. Because at the end, he's kind of like he's not going on adventures. He's chilling in Camelot, talking about. Okay, sure. Talking about um, talking about you know all the stuff that. Yeah. The, Guinevere is what like the back, back seat. Roberto Carlos or John Arnaiz position, banging it in from forty yards. Um, no, free Gu- kick kind of a thing. Guinevere, I think, is the director of football. <laughs> <laughs> she's the, she's sport, she's in charge of the branding. Of she's, yeah, she's yeah, she's sure. the she's like yeah, she's in charge of the branding. She's in charge of like 
scouting, new signings. Yeah, sure. She does a lot of them. She's in charge of the media. She's in charge of the YouTube Camelot channel. Yeah, her and her basically her and Arthur are in charge of the whole thing. She's doing clips. She's doing. She's getting Lancelot and and um, yeah. and Arthur to do like a like a fun a fun challenge for for TikTok. They're jointly in charge of the. They're jointly in charge of the. Um, of the whole operation. All right, then we've got um, in, in goal. Who's in goal? I'm saying, I'm saying Tristan. I think Tristan's got the Tristan's in goal. Good energy from Tristan. L- 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 Lancelot. Oh, and actually, I'll tell you why. He's a good sweeper keeper. Oh I yeah, because his 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 job was to go and um, collect his old from Ireland. Mm. So he's like good. At, he's like good at he's he's good at picking up. Playing out from the back, yeah, sure. Doing his job, keeping everyone safe, you know. Yeah, Megatron up front. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think we've lost the bottle. No, 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 Megatron. Megatron's not up front. Let's go for um, Lancelot first. Lo- okay, Lancelot. Lance- Lancelot, I think, is definitely your striker here. I can imagine the commentary. I, I can imagine Clive Tilsey going, Lancelot. You know, Lancelot, Lancelot, yeah. Lancelot. Yeah, Lancelot you know? is your. Um, oh, is- Lancelot. He's <laughs> <laughs> you know, Gary Neville on the side. Aguero. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I reckon. Uh, yeah, he's Speaking like. Speaking of Balotelli, he's, he's who's uh, the Balotelli of this team? Who's the, Lancelot, who's the Lancelot's the Balotelli? Who, he's the loose cannon. He no. buys a trampoline for his mother instead of going shopping. No, he's he's yeah. um he's uh no. I'll tell you who the, that uh, that's Garwain. Oh, Garwain. Garwain, because he's the whole thing in, in Green Knight. You know, he's like he's young. He's 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 a little bit green. Yes, he's like trying to. He's he's doing crazy stuff. Yeah, played by Dad Patel. So he's. I think Lancelot is your like. Um, is your like your striker, right? Yeah. He's your Harland. Okay. He's like perfect in every way. Yeah, <laughs> you feel like just like Harland. Just like Harland. <laughs> just he's perfect in every no, way. No, but you know how people say that Harland's just like built different. You know, he's like that. He's just like a. Well, he's, a well, he's a monster. They found him he's in a, a swamp. A, yeah, Lancelot is like a. He's a beast. He reminds me of Killer Croc from Batman. Yeah, what, unstoppable. Harland or Lancelot? <laughs> Lancelot. No, yeah. Harland. <laughs> he's just like a crocodile that they've yeah. genetically engineered to stand up. Yeah, awesome. You know, he, um, he, the way the way sometimes he like. Runs through people. It's like it's almost it's like it's like laughable. Yeah, it's just so yeah ridiculous. Anyway, and sorry, he can is... score. He's like he's got everything. You know, he's not just a tapping merchant. He can he can score goals. He can score goals left, right, and head. He you can, know, he, you know what his favorite. He he admitted what his favorite food was on a on a reel that I saw recently. You know, what his favorite food is what Donna pizza. Ah. Oh. That's very. He has uh, one Donna pizza a year after the season ends. What? He only allows himself one a year. Well, he's, he's Erling Erl- Erl- Haaland, isn't he? Yes, pose. Yeah. He couldn't have a Donna pizza every week. And it's his. Yeah, I guess is that a, is that a, is that, a, is that popular in Scandinavia? I guess. I think he's just Manchester. I think it's just Manchester. Or maybe he um, grew up in Manchester. You know. He, did he? Yeah, his dad was playing. There. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, I think that in that case, uh, Garwin or Garwain is uh, is probably our number ten. Yeah. Uh, for sure, he's like a. a he's the he's brains like attack, behind the like whole operation. Yeah, for sure. Um, I think uh, centre backs. Let's go centre backs. Who's the who's who's defending this Camelot team? Oh, centre backs. You, you're. I think you're big. Sort of like your commanding lead centre back. Yeah. Uh, and probably captain is going to be. Uh, is going to be Percival here. Was the head looking like on Percival? Pretty weird looking. Yeah, I reckon he'd be like he's like the equivalent of like um, Vincent Company. Get the job done. Shaved head, gladiatorial Italian centre back. Yeah, fashion, sure. You know, sure. And he um, he's Chiellini. He's Maldini. Yes. Wow. Is it Chiellini or Chiellini? I never know that. Chiellini. It's Chiellini. Yeah. Ch- Chiellini is, I think, the way that um, Denny Dyer would maybe say it. <laughs> Chiellini. Chiellini. Um, he's yeah. He's like shout out Denny Dyer by the way. You know, he goes. What he, an absolute what an absolute arc for him. To be as celebrated as he is now, I, people, people I, I love really like Danny. Though. He's brilliant. He you was know, he a favourite of um, he, the UFO Pinters, documentary. Actually, really turned him around. You think you know? You think that you did the UFO documentary would kill your career? But for anything, that's why is I it, took interest in him. Isn't that true? He's, he was like one of P- Pinter's favourites. Like Pinter loved him. I thought he was an amazing actor. I went to go see a Harold Pinter play, The Homecoming, in the Almeida Theatre, uh-huh. and he was great in that. He was in it. Yeah, he was in it. I met him afterwards awesome. in, the, in the taxi rank. He was great. I went to see Juno and the Paycock the other day, and I met Mark Rylance afterwards. He was oh lovely. really, really awesome. What's Rylance like? A hey, really nice guy. Yeah. Did um, you ask him about the BFG? I didn't ask him about the BFG. I didn't ask him about any of his projects. I really want to know whether it was a CGI giant or that was all makeup. <laughs> <laughs> they actually met. They 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 got him. They they 
pumped and full of growth hormone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's why he's so quiet now. He doesn't do yeah. any interviews because of his weird appearance. <laughs> yeah, because he's, he's, uh, people actually don't know this about Mike, Mark Rylance because the camera sort of changed proportion. He's 300 feet tall. <laughs> <laughs> you can see it in all the interviews he does for the um, his different sort of Spielberg films. Yeah. He's always, it's like they use the same effects as they do in Gandalf and the Hobbit. Yeah. Or he's like on a giant chair. He's really far no, he's, away. No, he's, wait, no. Yeah, he's, he's on a giant chair. He's really far he's away. A, he's <laughs> a really, on a really big chair far away. <laughs> yeah. And then, um, yeah. and then Benedict Cumberbatch. Really close small on a normal chair. on a really small chair. Yeah, it was impossible to to get him inside the Gilgit Theatre. You know, the but he <laughs> was brilliant nonetheless. It was like George's marvelous medicine. They had He's to take the roof off. His head spoken at the top. You just I, have Matt, to look at. It. You have to get on a roof of another George's building. George's marvelous his medicine was awesome. That was my favorite one when I was a Surprised kid. Surprised Disney not cashed in on that one. I would love to see an old, uh, really tall, big, lean grandmother. It, it was Judy Dench. That was my favorite one when I was a kid. I don't know why, but it was the one I was. I was. I was always getting my granddad to reread it to me. I loved that shit. Which was. Wait, was it the grandma? Was she nice or bad? I can't remember. Uh, I, I think she was bad, wasn't she? Was she bad? Was she, she was so... She was like she was Robert so De Niro, bad grandma. <laughs> Do you think that no, is Robert, that Robert De Niro? No, is that Robert Dino, De Niro? No, he is no, that's, Johnny, that's Johnny Knoxville, isn't it? No, but he also did Dirty Grandpa. Da- dirty he Grandpa. He did Dirty Grandpa. He did Dirty Grandpa. I Sorry, watched The Godfather. I'm for confusing Bad Grandpa <laughs> and Dirty Grandpa. The Godfather for the first time this week. Oh, yeah. This week. Bloody hell. Godfather 2 or Godfather 1? One? 1. I watched 2 this week. Oh, man. But it's three hours long. It's, I didn't know it was that long. It's really good, though, isn't it? It's really good. Is it the best film I've ever seen in my entire life? No. It was God, good, though. God, I really like Godfather 1. Godfather 2 is I liked seeing, unbelievable um, business. I actually man. thought of you when I watched The Godfather 1. Oh, yeah. Because there's uh, because obviously I've not seen it before, but I know all the bril- references. And my brilliant impressions. Well, you, I don't know where you say it, but you, you said it once during a show, I think, where you said... Look at my boy! They look what they they they, 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 they massacred my boy. My boy. <laughs> yeah. I haven't you said that before in a show yeah, or something. I, I, yeah, I've they said massacred that my boy. I also, I also, <laughs> so I laughed really hard when I saw I also that because uh, it was like they were copying you. Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was like Marlon yeah. was copying yeah, Marlon copying me. Also, I love um, I love doing uh, Bona Sarah, Bona Sarah. <laughs> you come to me on the day of my daughter's wedding. I have to say that that rule about. I didn't know that was a rule for the Italian uh, mafia that you can you can approach them on their daughter's wedding and ask them for anything free of charge. I didn't know that. Yeah, that's an absolutely crazy rule. Seems like a crazy loophole. Is that it? why they don't like? It's like, it's like building a vent in the Death Star <laughs> that you can just shoot through <laughs> it to destroy is. it. <laughs> but now I'm seeing, you know, how they all how all these p- people they want they want sons instead of daughters. Yeah. Now I understand why. If I had four daughters and the Italian mafia, and I had to survive three peop four people four my daughter's f- uh, weddings and in those four weddings instead of attending my daughter's wedding I had to ask I had to like listen to anyone's request for yeah. a full day of course I don't want a daughter fuck that yeah of course I don't want a daughter I, I mean, want a son that can be murdered in, in, a, in a car yeah well how, who could be massacred at a, <laughs> a, like a toll, a toll booth yeah for sure also what's um, what's um, <laughs> what I also do a lot and I had this for one of my Soho shows I had this as one of the bits of walk on music is um the song that the old guy sings at the wedding. Oh yeah. I will say that um, a lot of people wonder where it gets all of his wealth from, and it's from his mafia family. It's from my mafia family. <laughs> Your dad owns uh, the mafia. And obviously, uh, thank shout you. Shout out, Kevin. Thank you for mentioning my considerable wealth because it's something <laughs> yeah. that what a lot of the impression you might not get from <laughs> how I act and behave is that I actually have obviously millions in a trust fund. As I'm saying that, I'm looking at a pigeon with only one leg. I'm going, no, yeah, that's about right. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, that's you. Ah. Your spirit animal. Smash my phone again. What's your spirit animal? Let's go, let's go there. Pigeon. Pigeon. Well, uh, why don't we do a test? I'll yeah. play you online. We'll tell me what my spirit animal is. Okay. And this is not. I will. I will repeat. This is not Patronus. This is spirit animal. Yeah. Fuck Different that. thing. Also, okay. Right. Second. Let's. So let's just catch up from where we've been. George's nan uh, and um, and Don Vito Corleone on the wings. <laughs> <laughs> so just catch yes, up. Yes, of course. Okay. Someone better be doing fan art of this. She's. They go. They go. Back post, and she just picks up the ball and just pans it over. <laughs> yeah, you can't do it back so, grandma. So, you can't pick ball. Back. So here we we've got it's on the field. So nothing. just just to remind you guys, we have our strike partnership. Uh, Arthur and Guinevere run the club. Yeah. Our strike partnership is uh, Lancelot and Megatron. Gimli and Legolas in the centre. Hang on, <laughs> <In> the <laughs> our, number, our number ten. Pair, yeah. Our number ten is uh, 
Our number ten <laughs> is Garwain. Yeah, Garwain. On the wings are George, George's Nan from George's Marvelous Medicine, and uh, Don Vito Corleone. Mm. And in goal is Tristan. Yep, sure. And Percival is yeah. uh, the centre back. Other centre back in the pairing, Sunil Patel. Oh yeah. So add that to the fan art. Sure, sure, sure. Um, I think the um, maybe the rival team would be maybe. Here we go. This is I'm a, thinking the Power Rangers. <laughs> yeah, this is a great website. Okay, what is cool. my spirit animal from spiritanimal.info? Yeah, wow. Okay, question one. Should I do it for you and then do it for me? Okay, I'll do it, do it for me first. All right, what is your favorite natural element? Um, and is this is earth, water? Uh, there, there, there are two more options that I didn't know which are going to blow oh, your mind. Oh, hell. Okay. You've got air, earth, fire, and water. Wood and space. <laughs> Did you know that they were two of the natural elements? This is no, I didn't know that. But it does make sense. Yes. I mean, I don't think a uh, well, a wood is earth, I imagine. Yeah, but there we are. Wood is trees. Yeah, I'll go for wood. Actually, I like to say <laughs> you wood. like wood. Yeah, I do like wood. Out of all of those, you like wood the best. Yeah, I like wood. Continue. I've got a lot of wood in my house. Oh yeah, my bed's made out of wood. Here we go. I yeah. feel at peace with myself most of the time. Very accurate, fairly accurate, somewhat inaccurate, or very inaccurate. Very inaccurate. Very inaccurate. Yeah, it's, 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 I'm screaming in my head. I tend to be more down to earth than head in the clouds. Oh, head in the clouds. Um, so very inaccurate. Continue. I'm like George's crumb up. Yeah. <laughs> my head is yeah, so You're not very up. down to earth. I find it easy to approach others. Oh, uh, no, medium. I'll go for the medium. So fairly accurate? Medium. Somewhat inaccurate. Bright medium down. There's no medium. <laughs> but, yeah. It has to be fairly accurate or somewhat inaccurate. Uh, fairly accurate. I frequently do things without a specific schedule or plan. Oh, we'll, we'll, we'll go for the highest one. Yeah. We'll go for the highest one. As we podcast with all our luggage in the park. <laughs> The typical ordinary way feels like a betrayal of myself. Oh, yeah, I'm an edgy guy. Yep. I frequently come up with ideas or solutions out of nowhere. Yeah, uh, no, no solutions. I'm boring. Very inaccurate. Very inaccurate. <coughs> Nearly there. Halfway through. The more useful I am to others, the happier I am. Oh. The more useful to others, the happier... I, you know what? This goes out to the Slimers. If this, you know, I am happy when you are happy. So, yes. Very accurate. Yes. I spend a lot of time observing before I act. Uh, yes, I'll say that. Yes, uh, hi. Very accurate. You're like Sherlock Holmes, aren't you? Sorry, I was my mind palace when you said that. <laughs> so, yeah. I like to be impressive to others. Ooh, medium. Fairly accurate or somewhat inaccurate? It's fairly accurate. I am always looking for new things to experience. Oh, the worst one. Uh, that I, Me too. I Set in I, our ways. Yeah, I've watched The Lord of the Rings about... <laughs> Three times this year. Crazy. I live a fast-paced existence. Number one. Very accurate. Fast and the Furious 12, more like. Yep. That's what they call me on how the street. Would, oh, how would you rather spend your free time? Walk or hike in a park, building something or engaging something creative, playing video games or watching a movie, getting together with my friends, reading my favorite book or website? I mean, reading my favorite website, BuzzFeed.com. Is, there Not, Buzz, is BuzzFeed.com on there? No. What Playing video games or watching a movie, huh? Yeah, going okay, out, I'll do that. One. My friends? No, n <laughs> none of these are close to what I actually enjoy doing. But, but <laughs> playing play video games. Okay, they don't have abattoir. Work. They don't have uh, no. They, <laughs> they have working in the. In I love the in the abattoir. <laughs> I require lots of time alone to recharge. Yes, very accurate. Me too. Yeah. I seek out the secret of the universe. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm, doing that. I'm doing it now. <laughs> We're doing always it now. doing that. Very doing it right now. Watch me. Here we go. You're the deer. <gasps> Oh my goodness. What it means to be the deer. Oh, when me. you have the deer as a spirit animal, you are highly sensitive and have strong intuition. By affinity with this animal, you have the power to deal with challenges with grace. You master the art of being both determined and gentle in your approach. The deer totem wisdom imparts those with a special connection with this animal with the ability to be vigilant and trust their instincts to get out of the trickiest situations. I feel like I'm, you know, like, um, I'm we said no, we said it wasn't, uh, yeah, a Patronus but look what's happened exactly. me and Harry Potter are linking up like this same same I'm going to take the quiz and then yeah, we're going to yeah, see yeah, we, yeah, no, we'll do, when, I, uh, well, I know what the things are so I can just well, do it really quickly I'm going to rattle through it and then uh, and then, um, yeah, then we'll, we'll see which of our animals will win in a fight okay well this is less well this is less fun because we you don't do, get to know anything about you okay I'll, I'll, talk, it, I'll talk it through well, I'll just sit here looking at a pigeon shall I <laughs> no you, you, you decide I think the deer goes left wing back it's fast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, be careful. Add that be to the fan art. 
it's taken out in the first two minutes, <laughs> like Bambi. Okay. Like Bambi's mum. Water, favourite element. Yeah. Number one, water, favourite element. I feel at peace with myself most of the time. Um, I don't know. Are you at peace with yourself? I, I've already done the test. Yeah, but I can't remember, can I? I, I don't uh, think I'm very this is the, this is inaccurate. The, I, should be I doing, tend to be more down to earth and head in a cloud. Now a fight. Very inaccurate. Why, why, why are you now doing fight, it to yourself now we're fighting I'm in doing public again. Now we're fighting in public again. I find it easy to approach others. Very inaccurate. I frequently do things without a specific plan. Very accurate. I'm rattling through it so that we're not, we're not, we're not repeating oh, stuff yeah, on the Oh, yeah, no, pod. that's great. The typical ordinary <laughs> way. For, yes. Very accurate. I'll put timestamp in here for anyone who's just Shut up. I Ed frequently come like, uh, Yeah, very accurate. Um, uh, yeah. You won't admit this is a bad idea. You won't admit it. You're too stubborn. No, it says that one of my things is, uh, one of my questions is, will you admit this? And I've just said very inaccurate. No, I won't. Uh, yep. Yep. And that's it. I'm a, it says mine is a Power Ranger. You're stalling because you haven't finished the test yet. No, the Red and Power Ranger is my spirit animal. I bet the, I bet your spirit animal is a stubborn donkey. <laughs> is what I imagine. A stubborn ass. Yes. Um, now, walk in a park for me. Here we go. Yep. Yep. All right, my animal is... Look at that. You're Look the at that, oh lad. The God. tiger. Shout out, Tiger the King. The tiger. Wow. I, my ti- I used to love tigers when I was a kid, man. I still do. <laughs> So read out the tiger then. In the kingdom of spirit animals, the tiger puts a special emphasis on raw feelings and emotions. The tiger spirit animal symbolizes primal instincts, unpredictability, and ability to trust yourself. Well, I think I must have answered it wrong because none of that, <laughs> <laughs> none of that is me at all. By affinity with the spirit animal, you may enjoy dealing with life matters spontaneously, trusting your intuition, and acting fast when needed. All right, so f- fast tiger can be right wing back then. I think you're more like Tigger the tiger. He's technically a tiger, isn't he? Yeah, so, all right, Tigger is uh, right wing back. Um, and then I think the... the how, how many have we got? We've got two strikers, one midfielder, um, four defenders. Gimli and Legolas in the keeper. middle. They're in the, aren't they around the table? We need uh, two more. No, I think uh, Thomas Moore and Thomas Cromwell. They're oh, the, the Crommers. The, yeah. the, the, the Tommies. Are they the bur- are they burning Catholics? The Tudor Tommies. No. Yeah. <coughs> Moore was a Catholic who burned, Protest- uh, to burn heretics. Uh, evangelicals. Um, we should go and say Thomas called Cromwell. Himself. Where is he? Um, I, th- I think Brixton. <laughs> Thomas <laughs> I think Cromwell. He's, I think he's outside the Brixton McDonald's. They're, no, do you know where they both are? Tower. Of, they're both. They've got a plaque in the Tower of London, presumably, because that's where they were well, beheaded and so killed today, and destroyed. We were going to go to the Tower of London, but impossible. Uh, well, it wasn't impossible, but we, we wanted to. Yeah, absolutely impossible. It's not impossible. But one day we will go to the Tower of London. Um, I'm, I, I want to see the. Um, I'm so excited to see all the people that were killed there. <laughs> I don't think you get to see them because. No, they're still there. Oh, you think a ghost? Tom Horton told me. Really? No, he didn't tell me that. Sorry. I'd love to spend a night in the Tower of London, wouldn't you? Yeah, well, I used to live by there, so I used to walk by it all the time. Yeah, but I'd that's not the same. I look up in the windows and I think, what's going on in there? But that's not the same as seeing as spending the night with all the ghosts. Well, it's not. I'd, I'd like to spend a night with a ghost. Wouldn't it be brilliant to spend a night in the dungeon at the Tower of London? Yeah. Just to, to, just to meet all the ghosts. I'd love to see all the torture instruments and just to uh, understand how lucky I am. I don't think I'd survive back then. They wouldn't like me. I don't know if they still have all the torture stuff. Oh, no, they'd absolutely they'd kill my ass. I'd be dead meat. I'd be like a... I'd be like a... What would, a, you, what would your job be back then? What do you reckon? I would, I would be a... So, I, no, not, not, you have to be peasant. So we're pe- both peasants. No, I think, do you know what? I think we'd both be. Knowing what we're like. Don't say nights for the round table. No. We would be, like, we would be, um, um, do you know who Mark Smeaton is? He's, isn't he, um, Captain Hook's first mate? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Old Mr. Smee. Yeah. No, Mark Smeaton was like a musician in court. In Henry VIII and Anne Boleyn times. Oh, so he was like um, like Aerosmith or something. Yeah, he was executed for for shagging Anne Boleyn, allegedly. No. 
he was he was killed. But basically, he was like he was knocking around the court, being a, a really good musician and artist. But Amberlin got a flight. I've always said that. But, every, <laughs> but everybody, everybody, you're cheating on the king like that, and that ain't right. That's not on. He's the king. Come and what on. happened to her? She had it like she had it easy. And then what happened she with Mark Smeaton is everyone he got executed and basically allegedly scapegoated and and but he was like a really good at music and stuff but everyone was calling him a social climber because he he was of low birth. Yeah. So you and me would be low birth but we'd be social climbers and they'd all hate us and kill us for it. But we'd be really sick of the loot. And the um, and the virginals, we'd we'd both be able to play the virginals really well. You'd do comedy gigs with a, with a, with a portable electronic virginals strapped around your neck. You could do and back in those days. You could actually play Stairway to Heaven with the because fl- the flutes because uh, it would make sense. Can you imagine that? We go back, you know, like the, the Beatles movie where the they, the guy they you know they forget everyone's forgotten the Beatles. Yeah, we go back then, right? And then we could. Everyone's forgotten Led Zeppelin, s- yeah, because they, they don't heaven. exist for four hundred years. The flutes come in. I'm on the flute. You're on the on the, on the loop. <laughs> Imagine how quickly we get killed if we went to Henry <laughs> VIII's court and started playing, <laughs> started playing, yeah, <laughs> started playing Led Zeppelin songs. Yeah, the flute and the loop combo. That be if me and you went back to to to, to Hampton Court or. Uh, you know Greenwich Palace and started playing Grateful Dead songs <laughs> <laughs> they'd kill us on the spot <laughs> oh no do you know what we'd be do you know what this would be sick <laughs> you know what I'd love to be yeah I love what you love to All be right. uh, I'd love to be wearing some fancy livery and a chest plate standing at the door of the palace with yeah. a big axe and you're on the other side of the door. Yeah. And when someone tries to come in, we lean our axes across oh, the door at an X and say, "State your business." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what do you think about that? Yeah, I really. State like your it. business, traveller. Oh, it's a, someone from the monastery. Yeah. No, thank you. What business have you with the king? Yeah. All right, sure. you may pass. You may pass. That's what my job I want to be. Uh, you the know man I, who crosses his axe. There was probably they did that for a long time, and then there must have been a time in which they were like, "That's actually not on." You know, when the way that you know you see buildings with no smoking inside, that's yeah. because someone smoked in the building. And they go, no more. Yeah. The reason there's no people holding axes over the doors is because there was an accident. I hundred yeah. percent believe that. Yeah. Someone's been. Someone's they they lit it too far and yeah, chopped each yeah, other yeah, up. Yeah. For yeah. Sure, yeah. Hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah, that's absolutely. It's like yeah, you know, someone. It's like yeah, there's a there's a rule, but it's it's a, such a shame. I wonder when we stopped having. Guards crossing their axes and asking you to state your business. Well, I think the last time that happened was Slime Studios. We got hired those two guys oh, yeah, we with did, the Patreon yeah. money to stop yeah, the book. That's, so, that's why we're to so beat tall. Away all the fans kind of claw their way in I'd, and, and I'd, leave their eggs. I'd love to do that at the Star Theatre. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hiring two people yeah. to stand it outside and say, state your business. No edgy material. Yeah. Zero edgy material, please. I'd love to do. Um, oh my goodness, someone's just pulled up in front of us. On a crazy bike. On a crazy bike with a helmet. Fucking hell. That bike. Not just any helmet. This is a this is a bike helmet. It's like a motorbike helmet. Oh my god! He's tying it to a sapling tree. <laughs> I think this might be a, you know, when um, Abraham um, sets sets fire to a bush or whatever, the burning bush. Then that's Moses, isn't it? The burning bush. I, it was one of those lads. Yeah. This feels like one of those moments. This feels like a like like a, maybe God telling us something. What this man leading his electric bike against my a sapling? Son. Can I just say that? <laughs> I want to set my son on fire. Who was who was that that he told to sacrifice his kids? Now, I, think I, think, was, I think it was Abraham. Now, that was Abraham. Yeah, he set his son on fire. But I think the burning bush was Moses. I think there's a difficult conversation. See, you know what? If Thomas More was here, he'd be able to tell us. <laughs> I think it would have been a hard conversation between the son and Abraham after that incident. Yeah. So are we going to talk about what happened on the mountain? <laughs> yeah. Nah. No, no, no. Nah, no, nah, the voice all right. me to nah, do it. You know. I wasn't going to do it. Yeah, it you did know. look like you were going to do it. You sort of started, but then you said the voice st- said you to stop. Now, listen, I don't. You, I've always told you don't, don't make, don't make me choose between you and Jehovah. <laughs> don't make me choose between you and setting things on fire. Because I love, you know, I've always wanted. <laughs> how quickly Abraham was. God's like, here's a test. I want you to kill your son. It's like, yeah, no problem, straight away. Yeah, hundred percent. Like, no, you're supposed to have, think a bit <laughs> yeah, more about it's, it. It's not not <laughs> nah, really a test. I hate that guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nah, nah, you're, yeah. Do you know what? Oh God, I'll give you that one. Yeah. You're right about him. I don't like him either. <laughs> yeah. I've always actually said you're my best friend. If I, I think I was a God, yeah. I would say, so this is my test. I would say set fire to the sun. Mm. And then and then if you set fire to the sun, I'd say, I'm actually not a big fan of you. You've actually yeah. failed the test. Stand up to me. That's the kind of God I would be. It is crazy. Yeah, it is crazy that like, it's so funny how in the, in the Old Testament, in the Pentateuch, is that how you pronounce it? Wow, he really is tied it to a chaplain tree. I hope he's going to play table tennis. Um, he's—it's um, so funny how, like, you know, the the sort of the 
the general conception of God now. Yeah. Like in um, in the mainstream of like the Abrahamic God of the Christian God or whatever is that he's like this um, all powerful, ever present, uh, uh, all encompassing force. He is playing table tennis. That's awesome. <laughs> there's um, a, there's a, he's he's parked his bike next to a table tennis, and he's gone to the other side of the park to play table tennis. Awesome. on a different thing. That's great. And another guy's bringing his bike, <laughs> and then oh, they're all tying their bikes. They're all tying their bikes trees. to trees. Yeah. This is why you're not good at ping pong, is because you've got got a bike and you've not have tied a bike it to a sapling tie, tree. Tied tie, tie to a tree. Yeah. You, maybe you. Maybe next time you play ping pong, you tie something to a sapling tree. Oh my god, the leaves come down again. That's a sign from God. Bloody hell. Well, because I'm slagging him off now and I shouldn't be. Sorry, God. But, like, you know, God's whole thing in the Old Testament is he's basically a cunt and he just, he picks on specific people. <laughs> you know, he's, he, you know, he cunted off Moses in the end as well. No, not Christian spells Moses. He, he does, yeah. He, he fucks him off in the end. Not Christian spells he, he Moses. Upsets him, he upsets him over a minor <laughs> quibble. Moses does something a little tiny bit wrong. Yeah. He, like, he, he, God tells him to speak to a rock to yeah. get some food out of it. And instead, Moses hits the rock with his staff to get the food out of it. And God goes, do you know what? Just for that, you're never making it to the promised land. <laughs> I know you parted the Red Sea. I know you've been yeah. my best guy for ages. I know you're my major domo down there on earth. But do you know what? Just, that, but just for that, you can get fucked. You, you, you're going to die at the top of a mountain with the holy land in your sight. And you're never going to get there. I think that's something everyone would do. If, if I was told to get food out of a rock... Yeah. I think if it didn't work first time, I'd probably hit the rock against the floor. I think if, that's normal. I think if, that's fine. If God, if 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 I went through all the things that they went through in Egypt, right? Yeah. Freeing the slaves, freeing your people from slavery, traveling for ages and ages together. Yeah. Without, you're all traveling together. You're all like you're going through hardships, and and then you face a drought and a famine. You, none of your people can eat, and they're all poorly. And God goes, "Yeah, well, I try speaking to that rock to get some food." I go, "You are taking the piss." Yeah. <laughs> you are taking the piss. Yeah. Just make a load of fish turn up. It was it, yeah. <laughs> Make a load of turkeys and geese fly over. But the, to be fair, though, I've never spoken to a rock. I mean, you know, like I don't. I have never said to a rock, "Can I have? Can I have? Can I have some Jacob's crackers?" Who's Hello. That? Sorry, pigeons come up to us. Imagine how nice a packet of Jacob's cream crackers out of a rock would taste. Yeah, so that, good. That would be unbelievable. I actually, might have some Jacob's cream crackers for my lunch now. Yeah, really good. I love cream crackers. No man. spread, just crackers. Get this mouth even drier. My favorite meal in the world is cream crackers. With clover, on top. butter, butter, specifically clover. We all love clover. I'll tell you why. All over this land, my nan used to make me cream crackers, we and the butter she used was clover. clover. So that's a very specific taste in my brain. Is the way that it's churned. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I I lo- I do love clover as well. I do love it. I love the the way the butter sits on the on the cracker. Yeah. Deep ridges. Really Too deep much ridges. butter. And then sometimes, do you know what she'd do? What? If she had a bit of leftover ham or chicken, she'd oh, put that on the hell. crackers. Bit of ham and a cracker, fuck ham me. and chicken, a bit of chicken, mate. Can you believe that? Yeah, that was. I was eating like a king after school when when Nanny brought out the old the leftover chicken from yesterday. Oh, I made a mistake this week. Oh yeah, I got paid a hefty amount of money. And, Congratulations, um, thank you. And as a rich man, I know exactly how that feels. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I bought thirty five pounds worth of fried chicken. Why? <laughs> <laughs> on delivery and I just had it delivered to my house and I ate it with my hands yeah I bought two pot. I bought two pots of gravy nice and dipped the chicken I felt you, absolutely disgusting you ate 35 quid's worth yeah of chicken in one evening that's crazy yeah I uh yesterday after my Soho run ended I was a bit dude that crow's got a, th- a snack sorry where oh crow's eating God. on the ping pong table Imagine I always thought crow. I'd have a crow friend I'm desperate to make friends with a crow, man. That's the other thing about going to the Tower of London, man. I want to see the ravens. Oh, yeah, of course. The ravens. They say that they, um, they're there because of all the death, isn't it? Is that? Is that what they say? Well, it's because ravens used to eat the eyeballs of prisoners on, whose heads were on sticks. Ah. And that's why they're there, because they want to they, they wanna see if there's an eyeball still there. It's a bit like the way that, you know, I, I still... There's a, there's a, there used to be a 24-hour curry shop where I used to live. Ah. I'm there every single day just in case. <laughs> just in case. <laughs> yeah. They come back again. Just in case know? there's a bit, yeah. Yeah, a bit yeah, of curry at four in the morning. Yeah, actually, one of my favorite, um, one of my pla- one, a place that I used to eat, uh, loads, but I haven't for a while. I went went back to eat there yesterday. I went to get some food from there, and they stopped doing one of my favorite sides. Bloody hell. What, what's the place called? Shout out? 
Shout out. Well, actually, I don't think I'm going to shout it out, and I'll tell you why. Because <laughs> I used to like it there. I used to, when I was a vegetarian, I used to go there all the time, and I was very satisfied with what they did. And the side that they stopped doing is mac and cheese. And then I, and then I went to, to eat from there, and they didn't do the mac and cheese. And then I saw that their, their review score uh, was extremely low. Oh. Uh, so like you, one. so you're wor- you're worried that you might be enjoying something that's got lo- low score on Google. No, as in people, all the pictures were of like completely raw, uncooked chicken. <laughs> <laughs> but so what you're saying is you might you might be eating raw, uncooked chicken for your entire time that you were there and not noticed. <laughs> yeah, 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 sure. No, no, I was vegetarian, so I didn't notice anything. Okay, well but then, then yesterday I was about to get chicken, so I thought better not do that. I went somewhere else instead. Well, it's good news because macaroni and cheese you can have raw, so that's not fine. You, there's no problem with that. No, but I went somewhere else and got it cooked, and that was good. Okay. And I had the, the meal I had. I got to say was really lovely. Yeah. I'm gonna sh- I'm, actually, I'm going to find out who that was and shout them out. Well, that, shout listen. Out to, um, shout out to the, the dinner I had yesterday. <laughs> shout out to the dinner you had yesterday. Uh, and the dinner I had yesterday was from a place. Bit of raw chicken never hurt anyone. No, they didn't cook it raw. It was delicious. Bit of raw chicken never hurt anyone. My dinner yesterday was from a place called D's Island Grill. D presumably stands for dinner, like I said. If Mr. F- if Fantastic Mr. Fox can eat raw chickens, it's good enough for him. It's good enough for me. And I had... I didn't have a chicken in the end. That's what I had. Yeah. Oxtail with rice and peas. Bloody hell. And macaroni and cheese on the side. Bloody hell. And it was... Real, it was really nice. What did I have for lunch yesterday? And I had, uh, yeah, I think I had a fried dump, fried dumpling as well. I had sausages with broccoli yesterday. You didn't look at me, 30, and I was sad too. You didn't have thirty-five pounds worth of chicken. No, that was the night before. That was the night before that when I got paid, and then I had to have the broccoli the next day to counteract it. Okay. Real tough matter for my stomach there. Really telling it different things. Oh uh, yeah. I want to challenge myself. I like to challenge myself. This pigeon is very, very keen on us. Is that good? Yeah, I think they're just confident people, you know. I believe when that pigeons are the, are the... Are the, the future. No, no, <laughs> I, th- <laughs> I think they're the souls of people that have passed on to the next life. Right. So this could have been um, well, my ex-English teacher or something. So what you're functionally saying is that this is the next life. And we all turn into pigeons. We're, we're living in a pigeon's world. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying these, these lads all used to be lads, real lads. Do you think they know it? I think so. Well, that pigeon that came up to us and looked at us, I felt like that was something that I knew, maybe. Do you uh, not think they'd spell it out for us if they were people? And what, with fag ends on the floor? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Imagine if you saw a pigeon writing a message to you in fag ends. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> no, I don't want anything. No, I, don't, I don't want anything else. Yeah. <laughs> I hate you said that because now I'm not going to enjoy anything until a pigeon spells out. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, it's me, <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Mr. Simmons from English. <laughs> English. Me, and, me and Liv were doing a hypothetical the other day about if the other one turned into an animal. Mm. It, or if we turned, how would we let the other one know? This is really good talk. This is really good. I love your relationship. This is really important. A lot of people don't discuss this in relationships, but I, th- I love the way that you guys I, interact. I said if it was, if I was, if I turned into a cat, for example, yeah. or, or a bird, yeah, because I know, you know, if because I know that my girlfriend would, you know, keep her bedroom window ajar in yeah. the hot summer months. So if I turned into a cat, I'd wait till it's summer, go to her house, jump yeah. through the window, and then knock like a bit of, like, I'd find something, like, her walls are like a light color, yeah. So I'd find some ink. Or some paint, or some dirt, at, or like some, just even some ketchup. And I'd write on the walls using my paw, I am Ed. <laughs> you should 100% uh, do a little prank with her. So you now you got to do is get a cat for her, and then, no, 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 that's going to be, no. Don't get a cat for her. Get a cat when she's out, put a cat in the house, write I am Ed on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> little prank show. You know what I'd do if I was a rat? Yeah. To make, if to make sure that you knew I was a rat, you know uh-huh. what I'd do? What? Right, jump in through it same so jump into your house through the window, uh-huh. right? Jump in your head, make you do a cranberry <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, brilliant. Yeah, sure. Thanks. <laughs> and then I'd know it was you. Yeah. I'm, I'm spelling out, wait for the cream brulee. I am Hugh in yeah. cigarette ends on the counter. Yeah. You gotta wait for the cream brulee. Alright. If there's anything other than a cream brulee, it's not me, it's probably it's someone else's it's rat. <laughs> yeah. 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 I'm like I'm whisking yeah. eggs, I'm getting a blowtorch, I'm like, yeah. what the fuck's going on? And then I make I you, see it crisp up and I go, Oh, it's you. 
the right of it says I'm Q in the creme brulee on the top. <laughs> it's, it's burnt <laughs> caramel on the top. It says Just I'm Q. Just says I'm Q. Yeah, right. For and sure. you give it to someone and they go, right. Yeah, they go. Right on your head, you give them a creme brulee that says and I'm then, Q. And then they take you to Dignitas and put you down. <laughs> yeah. They send you, they immediately call the police. Yeah. Dignitas has got a must have a lot of ghosts in Dignitas. A lot of lads uh, have been there. A lot of lads no, have been there to I die. A lot of. But isn't the whole point of Dignitas that you made the decision to go there? Oh, you, well, oh yeah, so the ghosts are those people who want to remain. Unfinished business, right? It is unfinished business, yes. It is true. I think I'd definitely be a ghost. I don't think I'd ever finish. Me I'd never be finished with this. Also, me, Always like, trying to make a reel, even as a ghost. <laughs> <laughs> the problem with my mind is that I'm so fucking all over the place and scatterbrained yeah, that, t- like, if I would be in Dignitas having decided to die, they'd be pumping the shit into me and I'd go, oh, fuck, actually. I- yeah. So I would have unfinished business, I think. Do you know when um, you see those videos of people when they go bungee jumping, and yeah. it's like it's a fu- it's a fun little prank where they but they they jump, and then the guy goes, "Oh no, wait!" and he throws a rope out. Yeah. And then they go, "Ah, no, they can't catch the rope." What is that equivalent of dignitas? Because if you're like, "Oh no, wait," but you're like, inject you with an air bubble. So may- or may- well, maybe <laughs> Which would kill you anyway. Well, maybe it's <laughs> like it's like you're they they do it like ten minutes early. Yeah. But it's just water. Like, oh good. no! And then they go, "Look what we're doing." And they're like, "Oh no, it's not yet." And yeah, don't worry, it's just a joke. <laughs> you, have, you have ten minutes though. Have a heart attack and die. <laughs> yeah, you That's do. how they do it. A heart uh, dig the test. What would you do for your last ten minutes? Scroll on the phone. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, probably just go on Twitter. <laughs> yeah, go on Twitter. Yeah, see what's on. Yeah, probably go on Instagram. A heart attack. I'd, I'd probably watch the. Uh, you'd, compilation. Watch, uh, you'd watch heart attack. Well, the compilation is one where they they zoom up and you see the big picture. I like that. Yeah, I like uh, that a lot. Uh, were you more of a smart or an heart attack fan? Uh, heart attack. Wait, it was smart. It was a smart presented by quite an annoying man uh, who killed himself. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know that one. <laughs> he obviously didn't care about the show enough. Yeah, it's obviously I mean? like, obviously as we know, it is a sin to kill yourself. It is. So I won't be watching that her- her- heresy. Yeah, for sure. That heretical art program. Yeah. I'm going to stick with the 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 speaking clay bust of Caesar. Yeah, for sure. Who who was who was a. <laughs> a good Christian, as far as I know. Yeah, uh, but sure. actually, no. Morph is probably some sort of demon. Morph. Hard guy to read, isn't it? Hard guy to read. Yeah, yeah. I've, I wasn't a fan of him ever since he. We used to hang out at Amy Winehouse in in Camden, doing all yeah. sorts of stuff. Yeah. He's the reason that Amy Winehouse went that way. Yeah, well, of course, Morph security guard pushed someone off a fifth floor balcony. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Actually, that was Pete Doherty, wasn't it? Not Morph. Sorry. It's okay. It's but he, okay. they were all hanging around with each other, weren't they? They were, they were. <laughs> I know the comed- Amy a comedian that I can't name. Mm-hmm. Why, because you've forgotten their name or just because you're uh, Yeah, them? I'm a forgetful cunt. No, I can't name. They said that they were once doing... Um, they did a show with Amy Winehouse back in the day and then they all went out together after the show, panel yeah. show, and then he ended up um, in a hotel room with Amy Winehouse. And they were just having a, like a really romantic time in there. And then they left in the morning, never spoke again. But there was like it was like that was a real moment between us. And then she like died like two months later or something. Crazy. I think I know who that is. I think I can guess. I'm not going to do it on air. Okay. But um, yeah, that number no, that is crazy to have like a. Can you imagine be that? Imagine having that experience. And also, he said it like we were in McDonald's at one in the morning, and he told me that, and he was like. Oh, I've never told anyone that before. I mean, Crazy. I mean, that's sort of like if it was like two months before she died, wouldn't have she been like fucked and really? Maybe it wasn't two months before she died, but it was like before she died for sure. <laughs> oh, it was definitely. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm glad you about what that. I'm, I'm glad it was before she died. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it would have been an even crazier story. <laughs> just to check, two months um, after she died, we had an amazing night in a hotel together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, so he's was this comedian, and feel free to cut this out. Was this comedian saying he copped off with Winehouse? He didn't cop off. Oh, fine. But they had a connection. Oh, just like a very romantic. Yeah, night. they went out all night together, and then they got a hotel room, and they just talked all night and fell asleep. And then they were like, maybe going to see each other again, but it didn't happen. And then she like died a bit later. Oh, that's. that's oh, yeah. But he truly never told anyone that before. I feel bad maybe saying it. Maybe I cut it out. But you won't be able to work out who it is, I don't think. If I just said a comedian... These these people won't be able to figure it out. No. I think I might be able to figure okay, it out. Okay, well, we'll figure that out as soon as we um, end the podcast. And which that, is now. Which is now. Thank you very Thank much you for, for listening, listening everyone. to Slime Country. We love you all so much. 
thank you for all coming to our gigs and supporting this podcast. Yeah. Really appreciate it. And thank you, you Hugh, for the for for this beautiful day in the park. Yeah. What no, a nice it's, it's a really gorgeous weather today. It's really great weather. I'm covered in stains and ink and, and pain. dead leaves. And dead leaves, and I've got two. I've got a Morrison's bag and a little bag to take home, but um, I'm all right. And good news to the the Slimers, we have bought the equipment. Oh yeah, for us to go indoor <coughs> record podcast indoor places. So we'll be as long to, as nobody sees. As long as nobody sees. So we're going. To, we'll be going to museums. We'll be going to art galleries. We'll be going all sorts of places. Here's the, the plan. We might is, even do a poll yeah. on on the Patreon. On the Patreon for so where if we you go. Join our Patreon. We Ed's going to do a, set us up a little poll. Uh, or, or like a suggestion box of where we you, you want us to go yeah, because we can kind of go anywhere <laughs> and, and, I, I believe uh, we can go anywhere subject to um, it being in London and, and, and it being, not got a big job so the idea is is that yeah. we're, 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 we're going to sort of treat tourist attractions on a don't ask don't tell rule vis-a-vis recording audio inside the plan is to have concealable lapel mics on our person in our pockets we walk in go to the toilet all together set them up and Suck then walk, out, walk out of the toilet wearing microphones and recording a podcast very much like the Thomas Crown affair <laughs> so, you know? so every we'll episode every episode actually I've just realised this every episode very aptly for this podcast will begin in the toilet of wherever we are sure <laughs> necessarily and that doesn't suit that doesn't suit the branding of the podcast for it to start in a toilet <laughs> every um, episode starts in the toilet of the National Portrait Gallery <laughs> sure sure alright thanks for listening everyone Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Take it easy. Bye-bye. Bye.